Okay, now we're going to talk about the belt steel. Uh, the belt steel is a very interesting one because um, personally I was very torn with, uh, with whether this was a good steel or not for, for many years. Uh, my experience had been I'd done this on stage a number of times and I'd found that uh, it, regardless of the success of the steel itself, people in the audience questioned the validity of that moment. Uh, they were quite happy to accept that I'd successfully stolen the tie or the watch or the wallet or the belt, uh, um, sorry, the watch, the wallet or, or anything else from the person. But for some reason, the moment that the belt came off, people would feed back to me afterwards the question, oh, you know, that, that was a stooge, yes? So the assumption was that there was something too impossible about the belt. And I dropped it from my work for a long, long time. Uh, and then I started to, to use it in a close-up setting. And the story was I was working for Channel 5 in the UK and we were putting together a, you know, a pilot thing for something that never happened. You know, 90% of pilots don't get off the ground and this was by happenstance one of them. Uh, and outside of the context of filming, just for grins and giggles, I stole uh, one of the executive producer's belts. Uh, I hadn't expected it to be a success. It was just more of a bit of fun, but it worked really well. But the response was fascinating because, because we were in a much more uh, intimate, close-up environment and he was surrounded by his friends and peers, nobody questioned the validity of that moment. Uh, I started to do it a lot more in close-up uh, when I was at you know, corporate gigs and things. I'd get somebody to stand up from the table. And in this environment, the belt steel worked an absolute treat. Now, what is interesting about the belt steel is I think it's one of the easiest elements to learn. It's, it's not a hard thing to do. It's more about boldness and confidence and, and just being willing to get on and do it and not really worrying too much about whether you think they felt something or didn't feel something. Uh, because if you get on and do it, I would say you know, plucking, plucking a figure out of air nine times out of 10, uh, it works a treat, it works perfectly. So I'm, I'll show you the method that I use to steal the belt. Uh, it's the one that I found is the most uh, direct uh, and the easiest to do. There are a couple of things to remember before we get started, uh, and we'll cover these now. First and foremost, the kind of belt that we're stealing is the one that is identical to the leather watch strap. It's the belt buckle the standard leather uh, or, or, um, or plastic belt uh, itself. So where you have uh, the end of the belt is usually over here on the left hand side. Uh, you have a standard loop through belt buckle, uh, which is then just fed around the eyes in the trousers. We're looking for a belt. But most importantly, we're looking for a belt that will slide through the buckle. So what we don't want is a belt that's so thick that there's no room to move around the trouser. Ideally, uh, suit trousers work best because the fabric tends to be quite smooth. Uh, jeans, sometimes the loops are small and, and the, the size of the belt means that, you know, when, when you take your belt off or put your belt on, if it's really hard to, to come on and come off, stealing it is going to be nigh and impossible. You want something that once the belt is undone, if you held onto one end and just pulled, it would strip out very, very easily. So you're looking for uh, a smooth belt, uh, nice room in the loops, uh, and ideally trousers that aren't going to cause a lot of friction, something that's going to smoothly flow along. Now, uh, he's got dream, you've got jeans on at the moment, but they're actually quite nice brushed, uh, sort of brushed cotton jeans, which means that the belt should, in theory, slide out quite easily. So let's look at the basic technique. So first of all, we need to get this belt out of these first few loops. And the easiest method to do is to simply place my finger on the end of the belt here and by keeping contact with the flat of my hand across the front, I just draw the whole thing back. And as soon as I come a little way, you see the loop is created, my hand itself then continues to draw the whole thing out. So let me thread that back through. And just to show you in context of how smooth and quick that is, it's a very quick action. 
the cover for placing my hand here in the first place, because we are clearly in a sensitive area, uh, would be to ask the person to maybe take a step back or a step for, forward. Uh, and as they do so, obviously there is eye contact as I'm asking him to do something. And as he moves back, I run my hand along. And there's very little to feel. There's very little sensation. So as soon as it comes here, notice that once it's run back, I'm going to stop my fingers at this point of the belt. I'm not going to come all the way back because I don't want to be reaching forward again. So as soon as it comes back, I leave my hand here. My thumb, I'm going to grab hold of the belt itself, the belt proper, and my thumb is going to come to the end of this, uh, the, the buckle and where the pin is, and I'm going to use my fingers on my thumb to roll back so that the pin is now exposed. And if need be, my forefinger is going to just flick this out of the way a little bit, okay? So I'm going to give myself the freedom uh, and keeping my finger in the way of this pin and my thumb on the end of the buckle, I'm going to walk in this direction, keeping myself close to him as I turn around so that he's, you know, he's not getting the chance to have an exposed view. Keeping my finger here, I'm going to walk along and it's going to undo from the buckle itself. So by the time I get round this end, uh, it's free from the buckle, but I've still got hold of the buckle in some way. Either my finger's still in there or my hand is on it. Still keeping nice and close. Of course, in, in the real-time performance, my attention is going to be higher up. I want to keep him with me. So he doesn't, I don't want him looking down, clearly. So all of this is to keep his, the attention up. I'm going to hold on here. And I'm now going to create sort of like a figure of eight. I don't want to pull this way because it's going to snag. I want to be pulling in the same direction of the, uh, of the, of the, the belt, but turning my body into this space here. So as I turn my body round it, and I'm holding it here, I'm not moving and I'm using my body to create this figure of eight, which slides the belt round and out like so. And we're going to have a little pause in the video as we cut. So by pure magic, the next time you see us, his belt will have material, uh, uh, miraculously reappeared on his body. Okay, let's look at that again. Um, and we'll, you know, nice and swiftly, uh, but just giving you a little bit more time to take it in as well. So the hand is going to come to the end of the belt. But remember, with all of these things, we're keeping the attention high. We're giving him something you do. You know, can I just get you to, you know, turn around or take a step or something? And this action allows us to do this first action of undoing the belt. We're going to give the whole thing just a little tug. I'm, I'm placing my thumb here because if I pull this like this, he gets a real full sensation of all this movement. But by putting my thumb behind the buckle, uh, it limits that sensation. And it can be easily covered by maybe just a squeeze of the arm. My finger is going to get the pin out of the way because I don't want it to relocate. And I'm going to hold on to the buckle itself. And essentially, as I walk past him, I'm going to just be feeding that off. OK, so by the time I get to the other side, it's now free. So let me just put that back in. So we're in this position. We've got the pin out of the way. And as I walk by, keeping nice and close to his body, by the time I come to the other side, uh, I've released this, uh, released the buckle. And, you know, and of course, the reality is I've, I've got the use of both hands just to free it up if I need. Once we have it here, just by holding on to the buckle, uh, we're going to be feeding the belt out like so. But we're going to be covering this by me doing a sort of like a figure of eight, holding on to it, keeping nice and close, keeping my body against his so that any sensation of the belt is covered by the physical act of my body rubbing against his. By the time I come to the other side, uh, the belt is off. I'm going to ask you to slip that back on as quick as you possibly can, because uh, I'll now do that uh, at full speed for you, uh, so you can see the context of the whole thing in play. And remember, like everything else with this, we are less worried about the physical techniques of all of these steels. It's all about where the attention is. The, the real key to pickpocketing is having your relaxed frame, which draws his attention, and, and choosing where he's looking and where he's perceiving. So I'm going to get you to move forward just to start with. Uh, so in context of the routine, it would be, you know, maybe I've stolen a few other things, I've given a few things back, we've interacted, we've built up this sense of 
rapport. Uh, you know, he's comfortable with me in his personal space. We've got rid of all of those issues. And I'm just going to ask you just to, yeah, just to take a little step back for me. Let me come around here. Uh, now, with all of that movement, uh, it's done. A very quick steal. And what's lovely about this is if I've already got something of his, maybe if I've held something back like a mobile phone or some keys or, you know, a wallet, this whole thing, as soon as it's done, could be the moment that I bring out the phone. And while I'm not saying it directly, I'm, uh, uh, I'm, I'm suggesting that this whole movement was to get this item. So even if he was aware of something going on, his assumption may well be led to believe it's to do with the, the thing I'm revealing at this, this stage. Worst case scenario in this is that he knows I've just taken his belt. But the speed that I took it is ironically entertaining anyway. You know, even if he thinks, I just, you know, I felt you do that. And even if the people watching think, oh, well, he clearly knew. There is still an element of that that I just took his belt off in, you know, in five seconds. And he, he when he takes his belt off at night, takes longer than that on his own. And he's doing it himself, you know, with both hands. So there really is a kind of a no-lose situation to this. But in my experience, the vast majority of occasions, the person will have no idea that this is what you were doing and the reveal of this belt at whatever point you want to is a very strong one. Now there is an aspect, I'll, I'll give you that to hold, thank you, there is an aspect of this that some people think well you know if you take somebody's belt off won't their trousers fall down and the truth of the matter is no, not really. You'd have to have a ridiculously large pair of trousers uh, uh, for, for them to fall down just because you took the belt off. That's, you know, that's the kind of thing that you see on, on comedy shows um, you know, back in the 1940s. Uh, it's very unlikely that their trousers are actually going to come off them. Uh, most people wear belts uh, just to kind of tighten the last little bit up, uh, just to make them a bit more comfortable. Uh, but the steel itself is a nice smooth one. It's really just this action that you, that you need to worry about. Slide it back, undo the little pin. You've got a little dance around them as you slide the bolts out of the buckle and then your final turn and the whole thing is done. And at full speed, as you saw, you're really talking about this is the amount of time that it takes for a belt to come off. It's a little dance around their space. Uh, it's, a, it's a fun thing to witness. It's an incredibly fun thing to do. Uh, and I suggest that you take the first opportunity you have to steal somebody's belt.